Tasmania's high-end galleries are riding the wave of the Mona phenomenon. After years of travelling interstate and overseas to woo collectors, they now say buyers are coming to them. But it's not all celebrations. The downturn in the economy is hitting smaller galleries hard. For years, art buyers climbed rickety stairs to get to the jumbled storeroom of this Hobart gallery. Now there's a lift and a revamp underway to accommodate a growing hunger for art. Often it's people who come here with uh, no real idea of what they're going to find, do the Mona thing and then come along and see something that's just as you know, influential on their minds and they buy it. The Museum of Old and New Art has put Tasmania on the world art map. 80% of sales over $5,000 from this gallery now leave the state. It's a similar story round the corner. It's brought people here with an arts agenda, so they've been very keen to sort of see Mona but then see what's happening on a, um, a state level as well. Tasmanian galleries have often spent tens of thousands of dollars travelling to network with the art world. Mona has changed all that. We can actually sit back a bit and wait for them to walk through the door, which we've never been able to do in the past. All the attention is attracting more interstate artists to exhibit in Tasmania and sales to institutions are coming more easily. Sales to National Galleries and Parliament House through having Mona here because the curators have come just for an opening at Mona. But for some, even Mona can't save them from the economic downturn. We are seeing more numbers coming through the door but people aren't spending. Ian Jenner is closing down his gallery. He says there are plenty in the same boat. I do have anecdotal evidence from my framing wholesalers that there's a general downturn in that industry, which would indicate that there is less framing going on. Despite hard times for some, it seems there's never been a more exciting time for Tasmanian art. Lucy Shannon, ABC News.